are, Senator Lee. Uh, thank you very much, Mr. Secretary. Moments ago, you, you said you gave yourself an A, maybe an A for effort, on dealing with workforce issues at the Department of Homeland Security. I know that's important. You rely on your people. Now, you, you've got about 17,000 Border Patrol agents. Is that right? Uh, I'm sorry. We have about um, 16, 17,000 on the border. On the border. On, on the, the border. Southern, so on the let's, southern border. let's talk about those for a minute. Uh, 16, 17,000 on the southern border. Um, what happens, and this ties back to your, your desire to give yourself an A for effort on dealing with workforce issues, but what happens when you've got potentially thousands of those, uh, a pretty large percentage, who might soon become ineligible to work based on their vaccination status? Does that hurt or help our operational control of the border? Um, Senator, I hope that doesn't um, uh, prove to be the case. We are seeing a tremendous uptick in the number of Border Patrol agents along the southern border who are indeed receiving their vaccinations. I hope that does not materialize. Oh, well, yes, you hope, but, but, but do you have a plan oh, for maintaining this? Oh, would, would, would you be willing to share that plan with us in writing in the next two weeks? I, I would most certainly I, uh, be pleased to do so. I, appre I appreciate be. that. And, and on this, the topic of, of workforce relations, <laughs> on which you give yourself an, an A for effort, what about the issue with your Border Patrol agents recently being accused by some folks in the media of whipping illegal immigrants, when in fact they were not? Uh, why on earth did you not defend them? I mean, has no one in your entire department uh, uh, ever become aware of, of how one uses split reins when riding a horse? Oh, Senator, let me, let me say two things. Number one, I put 100% uh, into my work, and I'm incredibly proud to do so. That's number one. Number two, I stand with the men and women of our department through and through, and I will not prejudge facts before... Did you defend them when they were being attacked for whipping people, which they were not? Um, Senator, what I said quite clearly is that the independent investigation will determine the facts and those facts will drive the outcome. Okay. Nothing less and nothing more. Uh, you, yeah. Your response and your failure to defend them then and now is nothing short of morale crushing. If you want to maintain or obtain operational control of the border, which you do not now have, this is not a way to get there. Now, now the, the, the Department of Homeland Security's website, the whole reason for its existence to a significant degree in, involves a, a statement that's on your website of your department that states as follows, quote, managing the flow of people and goods into the United States is critical to maintaining our national security. Illegal aliens compromise the security of our nation by illegally entering the United States or overstaying their authorized period of admission, close quote. How is the department doing in that mission? to maintain that operational control of the border? Uh, Senator, we are enforcing the laws that Congress passed, and there are, different, there are different types of laws, if I may. There are the laws of accountability, and there are the laws of humanitarian relief. Individuals who make a claim for asylum, who are encountered upon illegal crossing at the border, are placed into immigration enforcement proceedings, are able to make their claim for asylum before an immigration judge, and if their claim is successful, under the law, they are able to stay here. If their claim is unsuccessful, then they are removed from the United States. Okay, so, so between January 1st and September 30th of this year, or just the time period in which President Biden has been in office, there have been about 1.7 million illegal crossers that have been encountered uh, at, our, at our southern border. And so... This doesn't suggest to me operational control. Um, this does suggest to me an administration that's willing to push on, on the poll factors that Senator Corner, Cornyn mentioned, accelerating then into the term. It also is reflected in the, in the Build Back Better plan with the full support of your administration, which paves a path for granting amnesty, turning on more of those poll factors. By the way, how many known gotaways have crossed our southern border in, in 2021? Senator, I'll have to provide that uh, number to you. I will certainly circle back uh, with you or your, your team expeditiously. I, I don't think that the uh, approximately 965,000 people who were subject 
uh, to Title 42 expulsions under the CDC's authority would consider the border open. I don't think the 40,000 or so individuals who were removed under the United States yeah. would consider the border. Yeah, uh, yes, sir. I, I understand that, and, and that's great, and I appreciate the great work done by the men and women serving in your department. Operational control isn't deemed in place because there are some people who have been stopped. Operational control has to be measured by those who are coming in right now at a breakneck, record-breaking pace unlawfully. So here's what I don't understand. Maybe you can help me understand this. Does America have the capacity to help make sure that we take in every person, uh, ill-intentioned or not, who wants to come to America? And, and what's, what's the real limiting principle there? Because I, letting two million or so people in illegally across our southern border in a year, together with the fact that your administration is backing legislation, it turns on more of a magnet, encouraging more people to here to come unlawfully, uh, seems consistent with that mindset that it's an unmitigated good. If I may, Senator, so this, this will, will, will require further discussion, but let me make a few important points, if, if I may. First of all, there is a, a misperception uh, that individuals uh, who are encountered at the border and who are not immediately expelled under, under the Title 42 authority or who are not subject to expedited removal and accelerated removal process, process are just let into the United States and left alone. And that is absolutely false. Well, well hang on a minute. Hang on a minute. Some of them right. are. Some of them are. Like, like Yuri Medina Loa, who's a 24-year-old Honduran man who was recently apprehended crossing the U.S.-Mexico border where he fraudulently claimed to be a 17-year-old. He then ended up in Jacksonville, Florida, where a family took him in. Days later, he stabbed the father of that family to death. He was a 24-year-old, not a 17-year-old, as he claimed. There are people like him crossing, and with the assistance, with the approval, with the facilitation, in some cases, of your department, these things are happening. That, that, is, uh, that is inaccurate. I am aware uh, of the case. That individual is being prosecuted. There is an immigration enforcement detainer on that individual. Did your department or did it not allow him in? Um, uh, Senator, I'd like to not comment on the details because... I bet you would not like a, to comment on the details. If I may, Senator, there is a criminal case against that individual pending. Whether or not that individual committed fraud and deceived our personnel is a question that may be relevant to the ongoing criminal prosecution, uh, and so it would be inappropriate for me to comment on a pending criminal matter at this time. What's inappropriate is Thank for you, your Senator administration Lee. to continue leaving these borders open. Thank you, Senator while Lee. While pushing to turn on the poll factors. That's wrong, and it's immoral, and it's harming the security of the American people. Mr.